I needed a telehandler in order to build the ultimate man cave, but said telehandler I can't afford unless I picked one up that had a blown engine. That's what I did. I have did a three-part series on how to tear the engine down or what's involved, what was wrong with it. Be sure to check that out if you want to. We're starting the new series on putting it back together. So let's get started. <laughs> With the block and the head all stripped down and looking like a rusty mess, I hauled them to the machine shop. They gave them a bath, cleaned them up, decked them, put in new sleeves, and I got them back looking like this. All right, girls, you know what this part's called? Outerpiece. That's a good name for it, but they call it the engine block. The engine block. Yep. It doesn't look like block. It's actually got casting marks. So it's not. Block. That's right. Give me five. Smarty pants, your hands are full, huh? What about this part with all the valves in it? This part goes at the very top of the engine block, and so you know what they call it? They call it the head, the yeah. cylinder head. I can know that, and I can know yeah. the... Alright, let's go look at the forklift. Let's go see where the engine's supposed to go. Ready? It's supposed to be in there. Yeah. Oh. What nice do you think? Engine. There we go. Yeah. Do you know what that round thing is in there? Called a torque converter. I know torque? what it is. Like a stork? Torque? Like stork. Stabler. Yeah? Is that exciting? I know what it is. Show me. You're kind of low to the ground. It's harder. Get those pink cowgirl boots up there. There you go. So that's the torque converter right there. The torque converter? Converter. I think those look loose. I want to see. You want to see clear in there? Yeah. Daredevil. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. That's not easy to do <laughs> when you're holding the camera. Yeah. You got a tough little stomach, don't you? Yeah. Can I? No, I can't lift you with one hand. I used to, used to could. I can pick you up. You put your feet in there. But then you have to hold on. Careful because it's dirty in there. That's a small opening for getting an engine in and out, isn't it? You see I had to tie the hydraulic lines up to the ram mount. Pretty crazy, huh? Are you doing the sprinkler in there? <laughs> Alright, hold my thumb. Put some weight on it. Squeeze. Alright, can you stand up but don't hit your head? Look up. Look up. Look up. Look up. That works too. What do you think, Bay? Is that thumbs up? So we've got a block, a head, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. First thing you want to do, or first thing I do, is lube everything up, check some specs, and stuff some pistons. So these are the pistons that came out of the Perkins engine. You can see that there was a bunch of landings that broke out of here. This one, it's like reverse hemi. It's like a pocket. And what that does basically is concentrates it, gives you the perfect space to do it, like a little pot to do it in, but just right in the middle where you're gonna squirt. So the spray pattern hits that just perfect. It's a brilliant idea, very cool. Let's see if we can get some of these out. As far as I can tell, everything slides pretty good. So I bought a complete engine kit with piston sleeves and everything. And I didn't know how bad the condition was or that I would really need them. I just made sure that I had them. But it comes with new clips. It even says what the measurement is on them. Look at that. That's so sexy. That's so precise. I love that. It's one of my favorite things about doing engine building is there's so much that's clean and exact and precise. It just tickles me. I just love it. I just want to giggle. I'm just like, <laughs> that is dead nuts on. Makes me happy. So I'm using the Maxi Force kit. These pistons have five piston rings and they've got a really, really cool packaging system. Whoever did this, these guys deserve a raise because they did all the piston rings in order, one through five. That's right, there's five piston rings on this thing. So you've got your compression, your two follow up, and then you've got an oil return and then an oil sweeper ring. Or no, this is a sweeper, this is a return. The point is, it's got an arrow that points to the front of the engine. So the number five ring I do from the bottom, and the number five ring has a little circle clip in it. And this one can go either way, but you see it's got a little expanding wire, like that. So this goes on first, 
and then rotate it around because it's got to be opposite. So you see where my gap is right there? So that goes in there. And then this, you look at the ring and you see which side says top. You see where it you see where it says top right there? And because the piston's upside down, you gotta roll it over. And you take your piston expanding pliers and you just put it onto your piston and then just go down the rest of the way. No, my fingers are not pliers, but after all these years wrenching, close enough. It goes right on top so it's nice and centered, just like that. And we'll do our number four ring. This is the hardest ring to do in my opinion. Again, we look to see that it's top. So same thing, just open it up like that. Try to be careful not to scratch the face of the piston and try to be careful not to over expand it and break it. Breaking it is worse than scratching. So just work your way down. Nice and easy does it. Get to the point where you're close and then you can just kind of snap in one side and then the other side. That one says top right there. This is number three and you'll notice that it's got kind of a Tetris shape to it. You can see it's got a little cutout right there. So that cutout goes down and that's to scrape everything off the cylinder wall, knock the oil back down. So take these ones. These ones aren't so bad. They're not as hard as the number four. Number four is tough. And this is the 4.236 that we're doing here. Let's kind of walk that down there. So when you do these, you got to make sure that you don't have everything line up. If you put all of your rings in a row like this, and I've heard of people doing this, you're going to find that your engine doesn't have good compression and you'll be at a loss for what the heck did I do and you got to pull the engine back out. So what I do is I try to sp split it like a BMW or a Mercedes symbol. Sorry everybody for just being so wrong right there. <laughs> and then uh, just move this around the other side and that way they're all kind of separated and you don't get gases going straight down the side. Again it says top if you're using the Maxi Force kit and if you're getting the Maxi Force kit buy it from the guy out of Arizona on eBay. That guy's awesome. I don't know his name, I should, but he gave me really great service and I was really happy with him. His shipping was fast and everything was just freaking rainbows and sunshine. Okay, number two you didn't notice, but it's got the same kind of thing as a number one. You see how it's got kind of a notch on the inside side like that? That just helps the uh, gas and oils get around the ring the way that they're supposed to. Look at this, it says top. Now oil shouldn't get up this high. But when the piston's coming up, this helps gases, whatever, flush, push oil down, just kind of sweep it. That's my understanding of it. I could be wrong. I reserve the right. I reserve the right to be wrong. Wrong happens. Okay. Like I was saying, when you're shoving the exhaust out, all the rings go to the bottom. Uh, these have a special name. It's called a landing, a piston ring landing. You can see that they can wiggle just a little bit. You hear that? So anyway, that's why the special shapes. We'll check our gaps. I don't see anywhere. These two line up, so I'll rotate that a little bit. So that doesn't line up with anything else. That doesn't line up with anything else. That one's unique. And now those two line up. That's eh, easy to fix. No big deal. There we go. With five, it's tough. <laughs> and less critical. Alright, so you get some assembly lube because it's going to take a while for some oil to get in here. Get a, get a bunch of it off and then just place it again because if you just spin and go around this way without doing that it doesn't seem to do as good a job. If you get it all over this you're generally pretty good. You can get that to rock on and the party's more fun. There you go. And once you've got everything connected you can go ahead and put in your circlips. I do all the pistons first and that way I've got my assembly lube, all that stuff going on. And then I go back through and put the clips in everything. A good proven practice for putting these particular snap rings in, or any other snap ring for that matter, is to index the back end of it, the non-plier side. I think of this as the face because it has more detail. There's holes in it like eyeballs. But as you go in, get the bottom to seat in back in the back first. 
and then the rest will find its way because it has an independence to it. So these are rod bearing caps. Main bearings work the same way. They've got a little alignment cut out. You just push down on the opposite side and then just, if they don't fall out, you can just push down on it and it'll pop out. I'll show you on this next one. So you just slide it like that. And if you slide it far enough, they'll just come out. Some of them I've had in the past. These are all been really easy, but sometimes you'll have to slide them. They won't come out, and so you just push down on the top, and they'll come out. Make sure you get out all the contaminants. I get the oil, get them dry, so they're not going to move anyway. But also the oil attracts garbage. If you get a little something behind there, then even though your tolerances are right, it'll cause the bearing to stick up a little bit. Remember when I was first doing engines, I saw these, I thought. These don't even look like bearings. There's no rollers, there's no balls, there's no needles, there's, you know, like needle bearings and new joints. There's nothing. What the heck is this? But yeah, they're bearings, they bear it. You just rocked this. Stay tuned for part two. Good on you, you made it all the way through part one. Be sure to subscribe and bell to catch part two. Bonus footage at the end.